Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're talking CT5, chapter 11, which is pension funds. Now, pension funds are one of those things that you either get or you don't. If you get them, this is the easiest chapter in the course. If you don't, this is probably going to be one of the most challenging. Um, so let's go through it. If you don't understand it, I have made a little cheat sheet at the end um, that you can just learn off by heart and get a few marks for. Um, but otherwise, you might grasp it and you might be able to get full marks. So yeah, we're just going to talk through this chapter. Um, this is the notation that we need to know. And these are the various sections we're going to be going through. Um, the first one's actually quite easy. It's this whole lump sum on age retirement. So when someone retires, they're going to get paid a thousand bucks. Okay, and it's quite simply this formula. Now we've seen D50 before, but we've never seen the CR65. Okay, now this is where pensions get a little bit interesting, and that is you get to define this notation as you see fit. So I've defined the C65R to equal this. You'll see later on that we can define it to mean something different. So in pension, sometimes this is the answer you write down in the test. There's no numbers, there's, this is it. You write down that formula and you define what your uh, features are or your, yeah, your commutation functions are. Um, but it can get a little bit more difficult. And what we're going to see, we're going to just progress through um, the varying levels of difficulty. Because now let's say the last one you got a, a lump sum on retirement. Well, I'm if you're going to get a lump sum on death. And the difference between death and retirement is that death can occur on any year, whereas retirement, we said, was going to happen on age 65. So now we define this new symbol called M. And what M is, it is the summation of CD. And CD is very similar to what we had before, but now it's on the death um, decrement. And look how we've made it x plus a half. Before it was the x and the x aligned. Why have we done that? Well, think about it. Deaths can occur um, any time of the year. So we make the assumption that they occur uniformly across the year, which means on average they're going to happen halfway. It's an assumption, but it makes good mathematical sense. And so that's why we had to define this. And we needed to define this in order to define this, which is then used in the question. Okay, but don't worry, it gets more challenging. Um, we introduced this thing known as the salary scale. So in business or when you start to work, your salary will grow. This will uh, be because of inflation and because of merit. You know, you're getting more experience, you're getting smarter. Well, hopefully. So salary scale, it's, it's quite a simple process. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But basically, if you're earning 25000 uh, now, you use the salary scale and it'll tell you that at age 40, um, you should be making $39,000. Um, then there's also this whole accrued benefit, future benefit, prospective service benefit. Very good to read through because you need that when you now start bringing in um, final pensionable salary and what this is it's what's your final salary going to be and you can see we've got this other function here called Z but Z is not that bad it is just the average of your last three salaries um, the last three of them and the big thing is with the salary scale is note that we use SX minus 1 and not SX okay this is because we, the question will normally talk about the salary he was making in the previous year if uh, the salaries are revised continuously, then it's going to be x minus a half. Okay, now when we combine the salary scales with um, retirement or death or whatever, we can get these expected cash flows. Okay, but they're not very rarely asked in the test. What we normally asked is the expected value. So here, the expected value of the death and service benefit. And now what we're doing is we're bringing in the salary scale and we have to create a new commutation function. And this is SMXD and you can see it's again 
it's a summation. This one stops at MPA minus one, and that's the last retirement date. And you can see here we introduce the salary scale. And we introduce it over there, so we get the whole salary effect, and it all works out quite nicely. Like I said, don't worry if you're not understanding this. Some people grasp it, other people don't. I'm more on the don't side, but I have been, that's probably why I'm not explaining it that well. Uh, but we'll get through to it, and right at the end I'll show you a, a quick way how to, yeah, how to answer these questions. So this is when age retirement is on benefit, you're going to get a proportion of your salary. It's like a loyalty thing. thing. So the longer you work, the more years you going to be. So that M, you're going to get a greater fraction of your salary. And what's interesting here, okay, compared this one to this one over here, this is the death benefit, you're getting four times. This one, you're only getting a fraction of it. But... You see it's RA now, and what we've done is we've introduced an annuity here in the C commutations. And I see now it's because it's on the average salary, it's going to be Z, okay? And it's revised continuously. So you can see it starts getting very tricky very quickly. Um, I've just defined the rest of the notation we use over there. But it gets, it gets harder, okay? Because you can also do the expected present value of the future service benefit, okay? And with this one, we introduce the symbol R. And R is the sum of the M's. And remember the M, this is M bar now, needs to just be corrected for, because it's a continuous, yeah. You can see it starts getting difficult, okay? Um, this is a, a typical question that you might be asked in the test. And you can actually see that it's not that bad because these values here are tabulated in the orange book. So this question would be saying with only three marks, you'd write this out, you put in the figures, and it's simple, simple. It starts getting tricky when you know they start introducing these little things like part years not included. Okay, because then notice how the bar is not uh, included because part years not included. This isn't tabulated. So you'd have to go and get each of these tabulated functions. Okay, and yeah, I mentioned that there. Could not find them in the tables. Um, but then they could also say that there could be a maximum pension of uh, 40, 60th or final pension salary. And then that way you have to subtract. And if it's certain conditions. So it starts, it starts escalating. It starts getting quite tricky. Um, the eel health retirement benefit, this actually makes it much simpler. It's just a different decrement. Otherwise, it's kind of the same stuff. Um, and then the final thing is this whole future contributions, which introduces yet another commutation function. Okay, and this is the sum of D bars, and D bars is equal to that. Okay, and this is how much, what percentage of someone's salary do they have to contribute in order to meets a pensionable fund okay so if this has gone all over your head don't worry i have made this uh cheat sheet hold on which i have to i have to just drag up here sorry run out of screen space um is it all going to fit in no it doesn't all fit in okay but essentially if you learn this Okay, learn this. What this is is just a breakdown or a quick summary of all the things that we have gone through. Um, you'll know that when they want a lump sum, put in this one. When they want a lump sum on death, put in that one. When they want an annuity benefit past age retirement, you put in that one. When they want a future one, you put in that one. So, kind of learn this off by heart if you don't know what's going on, and especially if like you've got two days before the exam. And then just learn, there will be quite a nice little pattern that you'll see emerging with these ones. So they aren't that hard to learn. And then, yeah, in the exam, you might get a, an easy question where you just write out this formula and you put in the table values and it's really easy. Or it can be really hard where there's those, you know, it's only part years not included and there's a maximum introduced and they might introduce something else that's really funny. Um... That way, then you are in a little bit of trouble because you need to think the question through and no amount of learning will, will be able to get through it. 
Um, but if you do write up this basic structure, you will pick up one or two marks and you won't just get a zero for that question. But like I said, I'm probably not the most qualified person to be talking about this because I am one of the people who do battle with it. Um, but yeah, I've been doing some past papers and some of them, like I said, are very easy and others are quite tricky. But yeah, this is um, chapter 11, pension funds. Um, yeah, I hope I explained it. Ask, ask questions in the comment section below. I might not be able to answer them, but maybe somebody else who's watching them will be able to answer them. So check out the comments and answer the questions if you can. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And uh, study hard. Cheers.